It's Lori, and I am here today for the first time in a really long time with Eva and Charlotte. Um, and, you know, it's been a while since we were able to do a library haul because I think we just recently went inside a library for the first time since February. So our regional library has a good amount of safety standards, mask wearing, arrows on the floor that we didn't notice till we were almost done, but we were the only people in the library, so I guess it didn't matter that much. Um, that sort of thing. So we thought we'd give it a try. And it was nice. It was nice to get some books. So we thought we'd do a library haul for you all. I have a lot of Rick Riordan. I was feeling nostalgic. And um, I have never read the Magnus Chase series yet. I'm going to. Um, but the, I have the first and second book. I only checked out the first and second book because they didn't have the third book at the library. And I checked out a lot more books. <laughs> we have most of the Percy Jackson series, but we, I think the Titan's Curse was like everyone's favorite. So we loved it to death. I don't know if that necessarily and was everyone's favorite, but it did die a terrible death of pages everywhere. So so. I got to use pages for crafts, so. It was not, <laughs> it was not good. Her using, no. But I had to check out the Titan's Curse. I cried a lot. I I am very excited for the Percy Jackson um, show. Show, yes. I don't know how I feel about this, but that's really? okay. <laughs> Isles of Apollo, which might be my favorite Rick Riordan series. I'm so excited for the next one. Um, so they're amazing. I just finished the last one today. I cried a lot. <laughs> Um, but we had to check out the third book. Someone's Digitally. the third book. Yes, they only had one, two, and four in the library, so she got those, and then she borrowed my phone to read a book in a day and a half, so. Yeah. But at least it meant that you weren't missing your phone that long. <laughs> That's true. So lately I've been reading a lot of Jane Austen, and I hadn't, um, checked out any of the manga classics for a long time, so I've checked out Emma in Sense and Sensibility, and I've read Emma so far, and I really liked it. I, I read it again, I mean. <laughs> and then Sense and Sensibility, I really like the book, so I'm excited for the manga. Charlotte hated it. I don't know why. It's just, like, I like Pride and Prejudice and I like Sense and Sensibility, but they're the same book. <laughs> no. Like, you haven't read same. both of them. I have, well, I've read the manga. <laughs> manga is not the same as the book. Yeah. Sorry. So. Okay, so I did check out one YA novel for myself, and that is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. I've heard really, really good things about this book, and I saw it on the shelf, and I thought, well, I might as well pick it up. I have not started reading this yet. I've been a little preoccupied with other books as per normal, but I'm hoping to get to this one before I have to return it. I really like the cover on that one. I know, it does have a good cover, doesn't it? Yeah. Ali... Oh, no, Alibaba. Alex O'Donnell and the 40 Thieves by Regina Doman. Um, I read this in the car on the way back from the library, so I've already read it. But you've I've read already it read it before now, but it's just a good book by Regina Doman, one of my favorite authors. But if you want to send her flying to rage, you just say, can I has cheeseburger? <laughs> Which is in the book, and it caused much rage, and... Mm -hmm. And it's funny. It's not funny. Eva, is it funny? I don't know. I've never read the book. No, I meant oh, okay. Charlotte's reaction. <laughs> it is funny. Her reaction is funny. So, this is Show Me a Sign by Anne-Claire Lezo. I, I think I mispronounced that, <gasps> shockingly. Um, and I don't know much about it. Um, I found it on the shelf, and I pulled it out, and I read the description, and it sounded good, and I don't remember the description, but it has ASL in it, and I've been learning ASL, so, yay. Yep, something with American Sign Language and a pretty cover. Yes, yes it does have a nice cover. This is The Mistwick School for Music Craft by Jessica Quarry. Cowery. Cowery. 
Eva has read it, um, listened to it on audiobook, and it has a lot of music in it, so I'm not sure how it will translate from audiobook to book, but I'm excited because it's like a magical school for music, and that's fun. <clears throat> My next one is The Siren by Kiera Cass. I've read this before. It was good. I don't remember what it's about other than siren. Um, is it an evil siren or a less evil siren? Well, she still kills people, but I think she feels remorse. Okay, so, <laughs> so a nicer siren? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, and then this is by Emily Robertson. Robertson and not Robertson. I was confused Might by that. Might be Robertson. First. I'm not sure. Robertson. Lifestyles of Gods and Monsters. It's like, the description was interesting, but weird. Um, it's kind of like um, Theseus and the Minotaur, but set in modern day, I think. But it has a cool front cover and a cool back cover. And the description sounded cool. So other than manga, I only have one fiction book. It's Nanyana Land by Pam Munoz Ryan. And I don't know what this is about at all, but I had read Esperanza Rising before and really liked it, so. You figured good author might yeah. as well read another book? Yep. Yeah, I figure that's a good way to, to go. And the cover is pretty. Mm. <laughs> okay, and finishing up fiction, I did check out a couple of adult fiction books. So I checked out... Warrior of the Altai, maybe is how you pronounce that, by Robert Jordan. Um, I read the entire Wheel of Time series over the last year and a half or so. I finished it up, I don't know, April, May, June, sometime around there. <laughs> um, and this uh, was actually recently published, uh, but um, of course Robert Jordan passed away in... 90 something I believe um but this was like the first book he ever wrote I guess that they published um so I don't know a whole lot about it other than that and so I figured my husband might enjoy reading it and I might enjoy reading it so I picked it up but nobody has started it yet as is the problem in our household it is but the other fiction book that I picked up I have started and that is the Code of the Woosters by um, P.G. Wodehouse. So. Woosters. 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 We're Woosters. From Jeeve and Wooster. Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's just such a fun name. Woosters is the last name. Okay, so if you do not know P.G. Wodehouse, P.G. Wodehouse had like two iconic characters, Jeeves and Wooster. So uh, Jeeves is the butler and uh, Bertram Wooster is the butler's employer. And Jeeves is brilliant, and Wooster is kind of a moron, and it's so funny. <laughs> so, um, this is one of the many, many novels in that series. I'm thinking maybe Goodreads said it was the seventh of them. I don't actually read them in order at all. It doesn't really matter, because mostly it's just, like, Jeeves gets him out of all sorts of trouble. But so far in this book, there is a woman that he accidentally proposed to when he was trying to fix a fight between his friend and his girlfriend. Oh, no. She got the wrong idea, but now she's getting married. Um, and his uncle and the bride-to-be's dad are having a fight over a silver creamer pitcher shaped like a cow. And so his aunt sent him to steal it from the, the dad while he was there because he made his uncle sick by eating lobsters. I don't know. So <laughs> he has since um, been held up at gunpoint and he's now refusing to steal it. And what just happened is that it's uh, just been brought to his attention that his aunt is coming tomorrow. So things are only going to get worse. I don't know how Jeeves is going to save the day in this one, but I'm sure he does. Jeeves just wants to go on a round the world cruise, but... Understandable. That's not happening so far. So I kind of expect by the end they'll probably be on an around-the-world cruise. So Jeeves will probably get his way. So is the random woman marrying Wooster? No, no. Someone else? The friend that he was trying to 
get them patched up, but somehow she took it the wrong way and thought he was proposing, but she thinks he's still in love with her. Um, but she's marrying his friend and he just can't wait for this wedding to be over because he's afraid if it doesn't go through, she may think about him again and he doesn't want that. <laughs> so, and he, <laughs> I love these books. They're so much fun. And the coolest thing about this book is this has obviously been rebound. It has like the most gorgeous paper ever because oh. the copyrights 1938 feel this paper. That is cool. And then, like, the library was hardcore back in the day because it says this book is property of the public library. Do not mistreat it, exclamation point. Fines will be imposed for damage other than reasonable wear. So you apparently <laughs> didn't mess with the librarians. <laughs> the earliest checkout date that I can see in here um, is 1958. Huh. So, like, <laughs> this book has been in that library much longer than I've been alive. And that's kind of cool because I'm not exactly young. So now we're going to move on to some nonfiction. So why don't we start with Eva's giant fashion pile? <laughs> okay. So I have lots of fashion books. I have been very interested in the history of fashion lately, and I don't know how good any of these are because mostly my library picking out was like running to different places, grabbing stuff and leaving. It had been a while since we'd been to a library, so yeah, we might have been a little desperate for books. Yeah. <laughs> So I have the Illustrated Encyclopedia of Costume and Fashion um, that is by somebody. Jack? Casson Scott. But, here you go. And it says what year to present? Um, it goes from... 1066. Yep. Man, that's a serious book that's of fashion. That's ambitious. And present is probably like 1970s. the 80s, yeah, 70s. <laughs> when was this published? You can look at the back and see what the present fashion is. 1990. Ooh, Ooh very present. It was reprinted in 1995. Okay. Fancy. So, this, don't know how good it is, but it looks interesting. Have you flipped through it yet? or? No, yet? I have not. Oh, there's Regency. Yay. Yeah, <laughs> has been so obsessed with Regency. Easily distracted. <laughs> okay. Then I have the Vintage Dancers 1940s Style Guide. Um, I thought this was 1950s when I picked it up. I obviously did not look at it very closely or read it at all, but I've been interested in that since we had a play that was set in the 1950s, but I'm interested in 1940s too, so this is fine. But I do know the blog. I used it a lot for play research. <laughs> Then we have the DK Fashion Book. Um, this is interesting and it's very fun to read. I'm not sure about the accuracy of it, but it's very kid-friendly. I just, I have read a bit of it, but I was just disappointed by their lack of calling fibulae, fibulae. That is a disappointment <laughs> in this household. You should know what a fibulae is if you're going to live here. <laughs> And then I have What People Wore When by People, Melissa Levington. Yeah, maybe? the editor is Melissa Levington. Yeah. So it uses some older illustrations. I don't know how old, but they go through and they say, like, this is pretty accurate or this is not accurate whatsoever. And it's good. It's not as good as I was hoping it would be. But it's still interesting. <laughs> was this the one that you were excited to see when we were at the yeah, library? Yeah, because I'd heard of it before. Like, the other ones, I do not know about any of them. But, okay. yeah. Good deal. Okay, so as I have stated, I only checked out two non nonfiction books. Um, they're really fun. They are by Scholastic. I don't know if they had, like, a stated author. They do. Um... Oh, they have different authors. <laughs> no. I can't read these. The side thingies. No. I can't either because oh, they have stickers over them. Oh. Ot Finoski. And this one's Kelly. I can read Kelly for sure. <laughs> Kelly and Ot Finoski. I don't know. I'm sorry. But they are Mythopedias. This is 
All in a Family, which is about the heroes of ancient Greece myths. Um, and what is a beast, which is the um, monsters of Greek mythology. And they're as close to nonfiction as I got. So have you read them? Read part of them? I have read them. They're very fun and festive. They have... Um, festive. Festive monsters. They are very festive. There is a page that I need to show. Um, okay. The, the family portrait. Um, the drawings go through the entire book, and I think it's just to make mythology more fun for young people. But I almost gave up when I opened it, and the first thing I saw was. A group chat <laughs> of the gods and monsters. Personally, I really love those. Those are fun. Charlotte's not fun. So <laughs> that would be the problem. Yep. I'm doing a graphic design class right now, so I checked out a couple books about that. I have Graphic Design for Non-Designers by Seden. Tony Seddon and Jane Waterhouse. Um, haven't really looked through this that much. It looks pretty interesting. Um, I don't think I'd probably read through it from front to back, but I might use it for help in figuring out stuff. <laughs> and then I have Creative Anarchy, How to Break the Rules of Graphic Design for Creative Success by Denise Bolser. Bossler? Bossler. <laughs> but I really like the cover. Also have not looked through this very much, but I'm excited to see what it is like. I have to complain about the graphic design of a graphic design book because I was like, Kevin Victor Ari? What? It's, it's more for prettiness. Sake, it's not for prettiness, it's for disgust. Because you can read it on the, the edge. side is what kind of makes me twitchy. <laughs> yeah. This has been sitting on our dining room table an awful lot because somebody never clears their stuff off the no. table. So I that is a bit much for me, but again, not a graphic designer, so. <laughs> me neither. Got two more books in the nonfiction realm. Uh, one was in the YA section, and one was in the new adult book section. So, I picked up Stamped Racism, Anti-Racism New by Jason Reynolds and Ivern X. Kendi. I read uh, Kendi's Stamped from the beginning um, back in, like, March, maybe. I don't know. Time is flat. Not March. May. Some, some month this year. Yeah. In 2020, <laughs> I read his book, uh, Stamped from the Beginning. And this is uh, called a remix of it. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what to expect. I did see a YouTube video where Ibernex, Candy, and Jason Reynolds were talking to somebody. I can't remember who at this point because it's been a while about this book. So I think this book is meant for younger people, teens and so forth, to take the information from Stamp from the Beginning and put um, the anti-racism philosophy into place in their own lives. So kind of interested to see what it is exactly, but I saw it there and I figured I'd get it. And then the other one is called Race for Profit, How Banks in the Real Estate Industry Undermine Black Homeownership by, I should have looked up how to pronounce her name, last name Taylor, uh, Kianga Yamata, I'm hoping, close. Um, and I haven't heard about this book before, but, um, you know, I do know quite a bit about red redlining and things like that, so... I thought it'd be interesting to read a book specifically on uh, real estate and home ownership in terms of race. Okay, I have some random nonfiction. <laughs> I have Castles, England, Scotland, Wales, and Ireland, The Definitive Guide to the Most Impressive Buildings and Intriguing Sites by 
Oh my. This is uh Plantagenet Somerset Cry. Yes. <laughs> well, it says. It's very pretty. I don't know much about castles, so I figured why not. And you checked it out for pictures of castles, essentially, right? Yeah, and also for learning about SCA time period. Oh, yes. Yeah. Nerdiness. <laughs> I forget. Um, and then I have, you call this democracy, how to fix our government and deliver power to the people by Elizabeth Ru Rust. Rush, probably. Rush. Um, I don't know. I have not looked through this. Most of these, I have not looked at them at all, but if they have a nice cover and they're about interesting things, then... <laughs> they at least come home with us for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Then I have DK scientists who changed history. Um, the same deal as the last one. Don't know much about it, but I like DK books. <laughs> it's got a nice graphic design with Albert Einstein on the yeah. cover, so can't complain too much about that, I guess. Yep. And then I have DK sketchbook for the artist. And I have a zero clue what this is about other than art. Uh, sketching? Yeah. I bet it's about sketching. I assume so, but like, oh, there's something called character costumes. Yeah, I don't know. Apparently we need to work on the opening of the library <laughs> books once they come home part. Mm -hmm. But it's still very interesting. <laughs> okay, so that is our most recent library haul. The first one since February of 2020. Um... So let us know down in the comments if you've read any of these books, if they're ones that you loved. We'd love to hear about them. Maybe move them up on a reading pile, except for Charlotte, <laughs> who's almost done with her reading pile already. I'm not. Mm. Uh, made a lot more progress than hasn't opened a book and oh, yeah. has only opened one book. So I yeah. opened one book. I finished the manga. Oh, that's oh, true. Wow. You have finished a manga. Okay, I take it all back. So <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching. We hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.